Automakers in Canada have been waiting for a breakthrough like this. The U.S. has dropped its controversial NAFTA demand that 50% of all parts used to build vehicles be made in America. Well, look, it's a, it's a good first step that the United States withdrew what is a ridiculous proposal. If the U.S. would have been successful in their position, it would have completely wiped out the automotive industry here in Canada. Canada isn't commenting officially on what's happening behind the scenes, but at the highest levels, there is a new sense of optimism about the fate of the trade talks. As people have noticed, there seems to be a, a certain momentum around the table now that I certainly take as positive, but uh, we will see what new challenges uh, come up in the coming uh, uh, weeks uh, as, uh, as it continues. Donald Trump's top man on trade also shares that sentiment. The normally reserved and sometimes frosty Robert Lighthizer told an influential committee today there are signs of progress. And I think we are in a position where we're finally starting to converge. I mean, once again, I can't really say exactly what's going to end up happening, but I think we're in a, we're in a pretty good place. That tone change comes after two productive rounds of NAFTA talks, one in Montreal, the other in Mexico City. Negotiators are also facing an urgent political deadline to reach a deal before the Mexican federal election on July 1st and the U.S. midterms this fall. Well, I've always thought these, these talks are all about autos in the end. It's all about manufacturing for this administration. This former U.S. diplomat says it now appears there is the political will from the Trump administration to get to an agreement. Um, I, I think that what we're really seeing right now is the final sprint. These are clearly steps toward a deal, but Canada, Mexico and the U.S. still need to find compromise on more big issues, including improving Mexican labour standards and resolving trade disputes in NAFTA. Katie Simpson, CBC News, Ottawa. Now, this is a big deal for the auto sector because North American supply lines are so tightly intertwined and it would be hugely disruptive to try and pull them apart. Under NAFTA, vehicles assembled in Canada, the U.S., or Mexico use parts produced in all three countries. Auto parts crisscross North America and Canadian manufacturers rely on the free movement across borders. Consider a Ford transmission. It starts with scrap iron chips from Canada. Those are shipped to St. Cloud, Minnesota, where the iron is cast. It goes back to Canada to be machined in Guelph, Ontario. That part then crosses the border to a Ford plant in Sterling Heights, Michigan. That's where it becomes a fully assembled transmission. The transmission is shipped to Oakville, Ontario, where it's installed into the car. And finally, most of those go across the border to be sold at U.S. dealerships. So that transmission crosses the border five different times before ending up on the lot. That's just one example of why NAFTA is vitally important to Canada's automotive industry. And the Prime Minister knows billions of dollars and thousands of jobs are at stake. That's a level of integration that would be damaged by any thickening or imposition of uh, tariffs or penalties at the border. Another potentially tricky area for NAFTA negotiators that may surprise you, the packaging on your junk food, your favorite junk food. The U.S. wants to prevent the use of warning symbols and labels on sugary and fatty foods, similar to the kind of labels you might see on cigarettes. That goes against advice from health authorities, though, including the World Health Organization, which says packaging warnings can help combat diabetes and obesity. Canada and Mexico reportedly favor those warnings.